Hello fellow truckers and welcome back to American Truck Simulator. We are continuing our career mode in the International Lone Star. Painted in international orange. As you can see, we have a triple trailer load heading from Idaho Falls to Elko, Nevada. We're carrying computers with us. It is going to be a, uh, I don't even really know what the drive time is. Another, it's another six, hour, six and a half hour drive as far as the in-game is telling us. So it's probably going to be a, a pretty close to 30 minute episode. As you can see, I've had to kind of back into this thing kind of weird because there just there's not enough room for a triple trailer in this lot. Uh, I think that's kind of something that should be addressed by the game developers. If they're going to do a triple trailer load like this, it should be kind of along the back wall there. This is a little bit insane. I'm not even sure how I'm going to get this out of here without uh, crashing anything, but we'll do the best that we can. I am actually going to back up just a little bit so I can get over here to the right as far as I can, and then hopefully the trailers will just kind of come out the way I need them to and not get caught up on the other trailers in the yard. Seems like it's going to be okay. If we can get them out of this yard, I think we'll be fine. All right, looks like that's going to work. All right. And then I'll swing out a little bit to the right here so it doesn't hit any of that stuff on the side there. All right, so I think we're okay now. It was just a little bit. It took me a little bit to get into the get it to. Uh, it took me a little bit to get into that yard and lined up with that because I couldn't. There was no straight. There was no even relatively straight backing in. Uh, okay, there was no even relatively straight backing in option for that because of how the, the trailers were positioned. So I had to come in from the side, like you saw, and figure out getting my my truck lined up with the kingpin. It was relatively ridiculous, but I did end up figuring it out, as you can see. And now we're on the road heading towards Nevada. So we'll see how this uh, we'll see how this drive turns out. Hopefully, it's going to be mostly freeway driving. That would be nice. But uh, who knows? Who knows? Um, as an update, I did finally decide to, in addition to turning off the traffic offenses due to some of the issues that exist with that. I did decide to go ahead and turn off fatigue simulation, uh, mostly because I don't. I want. I want to have control over whether it's day or night when we're doing our loads. And you know, you guys want to watch. I know I prefer watching driving during the day because you can actually see everything. And so, for the purposes of the channel, I want to have control over what time of day it is. Uh, you know, we'll do the occasional night drive just to spice things up a little bit every once in a while, so it doesn't get super boring always driving during the day. But I would like to have the kind of control that I need, and if we're constantly having to fight fatigue simulation, that's going to make that very difficult. So I know I continue adding things that make the game a little bit less realistic as we go, but I try to, I feel like I have good reasons for doing it, and hopefully you agree. As always, we are driving with the Logitech uh, G Pro Flight Yoke system. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you who have not been following the channel are probably scratching your heads wondering why that's the case. Well, I don't have a steering wheel, and this is the closest thing I have to a steering wheel and pedals. So this is what we're using right now. I am currently using the rudder pedal toe brakes as my gas and brake pedal. And in the most, in, in the way that I've always taught everybody to drive, I'm doing it the wrong way. I'm using my left foot for braking. You should, you should never, ever do that. But because the rudder pedals are so spaced apart, I don't really have much of a choice. There's no, there's no reasonable way to drive with my, with just my right foot with the way that it's set up right now. But I would like to come up with a, with some kind of adapter option that would make it so that I can uh, use one foot and then have something that uh, you know manipulates the brake over on the other side for uh, and be able to just use my right foot. I imagine it, sh it wouldn't be that hard to figure out. I just I need to be in a place where I can actually do that, <laughs> and I'm not right now. So we'll have to wait and see. I don't know. Not really sure what we want to talk about today, because I know those of you who actually sit and watch these videos are mostly doing it because you like coming along for the ride as I babble about random things. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm moving soon. I'm. Moving back into uh, moving back into my travel trailer, I'm mostly excited about it. But I'm kind of I don't know. I'm kind of at a place in my life where uh, you know I, I want to downgrade into something smaller. Number one, and then number two, I love the idea of being able to stealth. Ooh, that's cool. That's super cool. 
Okay. I know I'm rubbernecking there, but I mean, that was a, that was that was too cool of a view to pass up, and you guys needed to see it. Uh, I love the idea of having a you know if I can't get into a boat, which you know, for the most part seems unlikely anywhere in any time in the near future. Uh, I'd love to be able to get into a true stealth camper, you know, like a box truck or something that we turned into a camper with no windows and it, from the outside it just looks like a cargo truck. And that way nobody has any reason to think that anything's going on. Okay, so he's turning. I think we'll be okay going through here because we should be able to get our load through with no problems. I'm going to go ahead and push through the inner... Oh, oh, never mind. Well, I should have gotten a ticket for that. I thought I was turning right there. <laughs> oh, well. Well, that's, that's the only drawback to turning off the traffic violations is that when I do stupid stuff like that, I don't technically have to pay for it. But I pay for it by looking dumb in front of you guys. So I think that's good enough. Try to stay over to the right here just to make sure that all of our trailers stay as close to in the line as we can get them. And then we can get on the freeway and start eating up some miles here. Ideally, we can get up to 65 and uh, really get some really get some stuff going. So, anyways, yeah, I really like the idea of a true stealth camper because. Then you don't have to worry about whether you can find RV parks or anything. You don't have to, you, you know, you don't have to pay for an RV park if you don't want to. Just find a place to park on the street, and as long as you're not ridiculously obvious about it, most people aren't even going to know that you're there. They're not going to care. You can stay the night wherever you feel like staying the night, and then, you know, move on to whatever the next day of stuff that you're doing. While I would love to be able to make my trailer that way uh, it has two problems first and foremost it's a travel trailer so it looks like somewhere where people would be staying and if uh, if we park on the street and people see us get into the trailer and you know they start no they start realizing oh they're staying there for the night they could call the cops and the cops come and ask us to leave and then it becomes this big irritating problem and then you know you have to do a bunch of stuff to make it stealthy ish you know, at, le at the very least, just making sure that your windows are completely light, light uh, blocking so that, you know, you're, you're in there with your lights on and nobody, re nobody can see that. But the other part of it just is that, um, you know, it might, the trailer that I have is not set up to be used in that manner, mostly because it has these big slides. Now, I chose the trailer because I have two opposing slides. The, the, the two slides that are on the trailer are directly across from each other. There's a kitchen slide that slides out on one side, and the living room slide comes out on the other side. And when you have both of those slides out, it makes the, it makes the trailer feel really, really big inside. So I'm a big fan of that. But the problem is, is that it does have a center island, and when the trailer is closed, the island completely blocks the stove and, you know, makes the sink harder to use, and it blocks off all, almost all of the kitchen drawers. You can't open them. You can't open the drawers under the island. You can't open the cabinets under the island either, so, you know, it blocks off that. And then when the living room slide is closed, um, most of my most of my storage is oh okay all right well this is where we're going to get to the cheating because i'm not going around because they want to block off block off a thing here it already takes long enough um so anyways let me get through this um anyways uh what was i saying oh yeah so you know i could work around those things i, I would like to find if we end up deciding to just stick with the trailer, I would like to find a way to remove that center island and relocate the sink that's in it. So that way, when the trailer's closed, the kitchen area is still usable. Ooh, I hope I have enough room to get around these guys. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, you know, that would be that would be ideal. And then, obviously, we would have to re reorganize our storage setup so that all of the cabinets and stuff that are blocked off when the living room slide is... See, look, there's a car there already. When the living room slide is closed, um, you know, 
we don't need access to those very often and we would just have to because the problem is is that my pantry items are are in that are in that area so <laughs> we would have to store our food in a different part of the trailer if we're gonna you know kind of try to boom kind of try to park in areas where we can't extend the slides because obviously if you're parking on the street if you're parking in a place where you're not technically supposed to where you're not technically maybe it's not illegal but you're still am i speeding i didn't think so i got i, oh, I guess we're not doing that all right well i'd like to get over but this guy's if this truck wasn't driving really slow i could just hang out in this lane but he decided to drive incredibly slow all right let's get our let's get our cruise control set back up and then hopefully this guy will just get off his butt and start driving the speed limit is 70 here so anyways uh so that's that's the couple of problems that i have obviously it's a very obvious it's very obviously an rv which makes which will draw attention to you know the anal retentive people who are like you can't park here and then you know so that's obvious that obviously makes it much harder and then the other side of it is just the it's not configured to be used in a way that you're where the slides are closed it's not it was never intended to be used with the slides closed so we would have to come up with creative solutions to deal with the slides being closed issue and then obviously there's always a risk of parking somewhere and having people be upset because oh god forbid you park somewhere where you're not bothering anybody but it's the rules so you can't park there it's like i'm i'm i'm, I'm really tired of people's rules i'm, I'm really tired of it I understand it's meant to stop people who act like jerks, but there needs to be some kind of proviso in it where it's like, you know, no parking here. If you park here and you disturb your neighbors in a significant way, then you will be you will be asked to leave. You know what I mean? It's, I, I don't like these blanket rules where everybody gets screwed over because of a few people who can't figure out how to not be jerks. <laughs> you know what I mean? And unfortunately, our, our, everywhere you go, the laws are like that. Somebody does something and acts like an asshole, and then everyone else has everyone else who wouldn't act like an asshole in that situation has to pay for it because of a few people. And we really need to start figuring out how to write laws in a way that makes it so that those of us who are respectful and won't act like that can still do those things, and then the people who do those things are punished. You know what I mean? I'm not a big fan of preventative law. You should be punished for the things that you do, not for the things that other people do. I'm not, I, I don't know. Personal preference thing, I'm whining about something that's never gonna change, so I will move on. <laughs> but I mean, some of the other things that we would need to do if we were gonna be trying to, uh, you know, be constantly boondocking would be, obviously I wanna get a decent amount of solar installed. I already have, what's going, oh, it's because of these cars here. I already have a decent amount of battery, um, battery capacity. As far as lithium ion, I think I have uh, two. What do I have? I have a 400 amp hour, or I have a 300 and 300 ish amp hour battery, and then another 200 amp hour battery, I think. So I think I have like 500 amp hour amp hours of lithium lithium ion batteries in there, which you know probably isn't enough for what I what I need because I'm a power user. I use a lot of electricity, but it's a good start at the very least and if we could get enough solar to keep that charged it should be enough for at least a day's worth of you know typical use for me um, obviously i'd like to have two or three days worth of typical use as far as batteries go but batteries are still fairly expensive and i'm not in a place to be able to do that but if we could get the power situation sorted out i'm gonna put my well let's go ahead and talk about that since i'm trying to find things to talk about the uh the rv that i bought has a 50 gallon water tank in it and the way that they mounted it was questionable and i say that because the tank ended up falling out of the bottom of my trailer uh, because they basically had this one big great 50 gallon 400 plus pound you know water tank mounted between two cross members with a what maybe a quarter inch or maybe maybe a half inch piece of it wasn't, nah, I'm pretty sure it wasn't a half inch piece of plywood is held it with plywood like it wasn't there's there's no there's no supporting straps or anything like that it's just a piece of plywood wedged between two cross members under the trailer oh crap oh crap oh crap oh crap okay whew. 
I forgot how heavy I was. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, it's, it's a piece of plywood wedged between two cross members, and that's supposed to hold up a 50 gallon water tank when it's full. Now, let me, let me point something out to you really quick here so you don't think that I'm being ridiculous. You, should not pro you probably should not be driving around with a full water tank that has 400 gallons in it, but I was parked in an RV park where I couldn't come and go as I please. It was more of a trailer park than it was an RV park. So I never took my trailer anywhere. It sat there in my spot for two years, and I was filling it up every once in a while because, you know, I just sometimes the water pressure where I was was kind of it was kind of iffy. And sometimes I was like, well, let me start using my water tank because the water pump in my trailer is more it is it had excellent pressure. It was perfect. It was exactly what I wanted, because when I take a shower, I like to I like to feel like I'm kind of sandblasting myself a little bit because <laughs> it just makes me feel like I'm getting cleaner. Uh, so sometimes ooh, it's a nice view. Where are we? Well, we gotta get we gotta get the we gotta get the view. Nice. The dam. It, it's not the Hoover Dam. It can't be. We're nowhere close to that. I don't know what this is, but it's cool. So, uh, anyways, uh, what was I saying? Oh, shout water pressure. So a lot of times I would want to use my my water pump because I got much better much better and much more consistent pressure out of that than I did from the city water supply. So I would fill up my tank because, you know, I'd have to fill up my tank every day. And, I, you know, the only way to know whether the tank is filled up is to either use the sensor system that's in there, which doesn't really provide you with an accurate gauge of how much water is in it, or just keep filling it up until water comes out of the uh, water comes out of the overflow spout. So I would fill it up until water came out of the overflow spout. Should be relatively safe. Oops. Uh, they should have to. All right, I'm I'm getting really bad about breaking here. I don't know why. It's because I'm using it's, I'm using this this system that's not intended to be used in this way. So it is what it is. So I would fill up my water tank, and then over time, as the with the continual weight change of filling the filling the tank up and then emptying it out and filling it up and emptying it out, it caused the plywood that was down there to warp and bend, and then it eventually broke, and that caused the water tank to you know fall down into the the protective barrier that's down under what are you doing okay uh, <laughs> probably because I hit him so it didn't fall out of the trailer but it, but if the if the little insulating barrier under the trailer hadn't been there it definitely would have so I had to go through this whole process of trying to figure out a way to put the put the water tank back up in there and it's just I've never found a good so I never found a good solution to get it back up in there in a way that does not make me feel secure. So my thought process at this point is that I'm going to take the water tank completely out of the trailer. I'm going to put it in the back of my truck, and then I will um, basically put the water pump for the trailer in the truck with it, so that I can basically just make my truck kind of like a city water supply and I'll pump the water out of my tank in the truck into the city water for the trailer and I think that should work out pretty well. Now obviously that's not going to work in situations where the weather is freezing and the water is going to freeze everything but realistically I don't like being in the cold anyways. I don't plan on going anywhere where there's going to be freezing temperatures. So ideally, or at least not if at least not to where it's going to be freezing enough that I'm going to have to worry about you know the water tank itself freezing. I'd have to ins I'd have to figure out a way to insulate the hoses coming from the tank going between between the truck and the RV. But, you know, ideally I could figure out some kind of solution for that. So I so and that's the and the second part of that is is that doing it that way will also make it so that if I need to go get water and we're in say a boondocking situation where I don't necessarily want to have to move the trailer, I can just go get water whenever I need to go get water, fill it up with the truck and then just come back and hook it back up again. So ideally that's the way it's going to work. I would probably buy a smaller reserve tank so that the trailer had water when we're in situations where we don't have the truck at the trailer. That would be the ideal solution to make sure that we always have water all the time. So I might put like a, I might put like a small, 
you know five or ten gallon tank in the cargo area where the water where the city where the water connection is and then I could run the water from the water the big water tank into the smaller water tank and then the and then have the smaller water tank feed water into the trailer so I might have to have two pumps if I did that though because <clears throat> obviously um, whatever water tank I end up having would need to be pressurized if I was going to have to try to use it in the system that way and clearly I, I, I don't really want to invest in something like that. So I'd have to have one pump that pumps it into the reservoir in the trailer and then another pump that pumps it that pressurizes the trailer system. Yeah, something like that. So I know that was a long drawn out discussion about something that's not really applicable to what we're doing right now. But like I said, you guys watch this stuff for the conversation and not necessarily for the, the driving is kind of like a background for the, the conversation. <laughs> At least that seems to be my experience so far, especially when it comes over, especially when I'm, uh, you know, getting comments from my elite dangerous audience. They're, they're, they're telling me, yeah, man, we like listening to you talk. I like we like this format where you're just kind of flying around and talking. And so I'm hoping that the trucking stuff will get to that point. I feel like the audience for this is growing much slower, but I guess the American Truck Simulator is probably not quite as popular as Elite Dangerous. So automatically the reach is probably a little bit less. But I hope so. I hope that uh, I hope I get enough people watching all of my various series to, uh, you know, dip into, oh, there's crop dusting going on over there. I wanted to do that. When I was doing, uh, when I was going through my part 141 flight school, I was, uh, I was seriously considering trying to go that route, doing the crop dusting thing, because that's probably as close as any civilian is going to get to, you know, doing fighter, fight, flying a fighter like air, aircraft, <laughs> you know, the, the maneuvers that they do, they're basically just doing, they're basically doing bombing runs is what they're doing. They're doing low level strafing runs. <laughs> they're just using pesticide instead of, instead of bombs. So that, I think that would be a really cool career uh, if I had been able to do that. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to finish my school and life got in the way and that's how that goes. I wish I had a way to know. Yeah, I knew I was going to turn. I knew I was turning my lights off. I mean, I guess I know my lights are on because the GPS changes to dark mode when the lights are on. That's why it's always dark when you're looking at it. Got a nice little sunset going on here. It's going to be kind of nice because by the time we get this load dropped off, um, it should be well and truly dark, and then I can go sleep and have the more and have the uh, next load start hopefully in the morning. So it would be really cool if we could get loads that constantly work this way, so I don't have to finagle too much making sure that the time turns out the way we want it to. I don't mind having, I don't mind having some night time in these drives because it adds to the the feeling of time progression, but. I just want to make sure that none of these drives are all in the dark because that kind of sucks. Like you can't see anything, you know, and obviously there's not really too much to see out here, out here, but we're moving into Nevada now. So that's cool. Now we need to slow it down because it's telling me that 45 is the speed limit through this little section here. Is that 35? Yeah, I think we're coming through a town or something. So we'll, ah, oh, jackpot. Anybody ready to gamble? We're in Nevada, it's legal here. I've had to go to casinos so many times, but I've never gambled. I know that sounds weird, but uh, yeah, it's true. I'm not, I don't like to gamble. I, I don't like the idea of gambling. Not, I don't, like I don't have a problem with people gambling. It's just me personally, I, I, I'm not very comfortable with risk. <laughs> it, and, so I try to minimize the amount of risk in my life and intentionally going and risking my money on something that's probably gonna lose is like, mm, no, I'm not gonna do that. So I'm perfectly fine with people gambling. Don't, 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 think, that I ha don't think that I'm that kind of person where it's like, no, you shouldn't be doing that. You're free to do what you want. It's just me personally, I have no interest in doing it. The reason why I've been to so many casinos is that I was a Marine musician which means I was in the Marine Band and uh, the Marine Band program, not the one in Washington, D.C. I was in one of the 12 fleet bands. And whenever Marine Corps units have their annual birthday ball, they uh, almost invariably end up going out to Nevada and using a casino for it because the, I guess the, the rental rates for the rooms are 
cheaper and you know a lot of marines like to gamble so it was kind of a two for one kind of deal where they were able to get a place to hold the event and then all the marines could gamble while they were there and just have a have a time of it well as a musician you have to perform for a lot of the Marine Corps ceremony. So the Marine Corps ball is like a, it's a ceremony kind of thing where, you know, it's not like dancing. I mean, they do have it, but it's not, that's not part of the ceremony. There's a birthday celebration ceremony that the Marine Corps has every year on the Marine Corps birthday, well, or around it, it depends. The, the, so the Marine, the Marine Corps birthday is November 10th. And, you know, you, you ideally want to have your celebration on the 10th, but um, as you might expect, there's only so many Marine bands and every unit wants to have the Marine band come perform at their ceremony because it makes the ceremony just that much better. So what ends up happening is, is that all of the units, all of the various units that need to celebrate the ball for their, for their Marines will schedule their birthday when the band has availability. So we have what's called a birthday. We had what's called a birthday ball season, where basically everything right around in the November area was. Oh, we're working a lot because all of these different units want to have their ball and they want the band to be there. So yeah, and we would we actually split our band into two parts so that we could cover more events because the typical Marine band is ideally right around 50 members set up with a, sp a specific number of each instrument and what would happen is, is that we would split our bands into half there would be a a gold band and a scarlet band because those are the marine corps colors gold and scarlet Ooh, too fast for this too fast for this and then so what would happen is is that you know half of the band would be allocated to what was called the gold band and half of the band would be allocated to what was called the scarlet band and that would allow us to cover twice as many ceremonies so are we uh, hmm Where's my bright lights? Or actually, I think I have it on a trigger here. Here we go. So now I can actually see. So uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't even remember how I got onto the how I moved over into the freaking Marine Corps birthday ball. But um, what was I talking about that got me into that? This is this is the problem with uh, this is the pro this is the problem with rambling on subjects like this. I get distracted by my own conversation because I have absolutely no idea how I got onto this subject. <laughs> <laughs> oh, casinos. I was We were talking about casinos. So anyways, a lot of the units would pick casinos because I guess they got a really good discount on like group rates and stuff like that. And the casinos want... I think the casinos probably saw it as a, oh, well, if we have all of these people here, they're going to come and gamble. Which, you know, makes sense. <laughs> so I was just saying, the reason I've been to so many casinos wasn't because I'm a gambler, because I've never gambled a day in my life, but... It's because we had all of those units that used the casinos to go do their Marine Corps birthday ball ceremonies, and they always wanted a band, and, you know, the band tries to accommodate as many of those requests as we possibly could. So, yeah. I've been to a lot of casinos. Just never gambled. Alright, we still have 45 minutes left, and we are very close to our our time limit for this so hopefully we can get this last 45 minutes done pretty quick and not go too far into the um the time limit i mean but i guess i, I really need to st I, I we're at the point now especially with as the lows get longer and longer that i just i need to stop worrying about how long this video is going these videos are going to be because they're just they're going to get longer and longer and there's really no good way to i mean i guess we can look at the estimated time and maybe start splitting some of these up into multiple episodes. I could just say if it's going to be if it's going to be, you know, 8 hours or more, we need to split this up into two, something like that. I guess it just kind of depends. Got a nice 75 mile an hour speed limit though. I have the automatic bright lights, automatic bright headlights on, so that's why it's clicking on and off all the time. Because, I mean, I, I really don't want to be doing hour-long videos because, A, that a lot of people aren't going to want to watch that, and then, B, I don't, wanna, I don't really want to have to talk consistently for that amount of time. That's a, that's a lot. I mean, I guess I could put cuts in. I suppose I, I suppose I, oh, do I need to stop at this way station here? Of course I do. All right, so we'll stop here. Oh, 
I guess I was able to bypass it. Never mind. Didn't have to stop. So we'll just pull through here then. Yeah, it's the only thing about not having my not having my uh, my route advisor. I think it's called a route advisor. The only thing about not having that up all the time is that I can't see what I can't see what's happening when things pop up like that. So that's that's slightly frustrating. We could have just drove past and I wouldn't have known. I heard I heard a beeping, a very low beeping sound, and I was like, what was that? Alright, so we can actually set it to 80. See how far we can get into this. We're down to 18, 17 minutes of in-game time. So ideally this won't be too much long. I can already see the delivery. If you look over at the at the GPS, you can start to see the rings for the delivery thing over there. So we're pretty close to being done with this load. Yeah, six and a half hours is right there, just a little bit over the border of what I would want to do in a single episode. But hopefully we can get this put in real quick. We don't have to back it in or anything, so that helps. We can just get it put on the get it put on the spot, drop it off, and get and get unloaded here. So I'm actually I'm actually kind of hoping that we get to the point where we're going to start getting some super long loads consistently. So that way I can start cutting them in half and making these episodes a little bit shorter and just, you know, doing two episodes per load rather than having to try to cram one long load in the episode like this. And that's I know that sounded highly inappropriate. Fortunately, the kids won't understand that reference, so at least most of them won't. <laughs> As I said, I served as a Marine, and Marines get pretty vulgar. Sorry. Okay, I don't think we need to come to a complete stop here. That compass looks like a UFO sometimes when you're in the dark like that. It's like, what's that floating down in front of my f Oh, no, that's the compass. <laughs> that was a little bit weird. All right, so the speed limit here is 35. Let's get our turn signal turned on. Fortunately, driving at night like this makes it so that there isn't very much traffic, so I don't really have to worry too much about crashing into anybody. <clears throat> and here is our destination. Where do they want us to park this? Looks like it's on the right side of the lot here based off of where the icon is. Am I able to see it? Okay, so ideally, so we're gonna pull out as far over here as we can so that I have plenty of room to swing around. Like that, yeah, that's our load area there. And hopefully those trailers will follow me around and not get stuck. Not like I can see anyways, so. Seems like it's working out though. Let's get ourselves put over here. All right, so hopefully you guys had lots of fun. Be sure to click that like button so the YouTube algorithm knows that you did and sends the video out to more viewers. The more we have coming along for these rides, the more fun they're going to be. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already so that when the next video comes out, it will show up in your video feed and you'll be able to watch it as soon as it becomes available. Channel members do get early access to all of my videos, so uh, be sure to click that join button and check out to see if any of those benefits that you can see are right for you um, based off of the various tiers that are available. Again, thank you very much for your time. I hope you guys had lots of fun and I'll see you for the next one.